This is the Zion Molus G60 Pocket Cob LED Video Light. It promises to deliver powerful and versatile lighting in a compact and portable package. But the question is, does it do that? And does size really matter when it comes to lighting up your subject? Let's find out. Just look how small this is. It fits in the palm of my hand and it's light too, weighing only 300 grams. Its size is usually compared to a Rubik's Cube, but some people probably have never held one of these before. So for comparison, here's one next to a HomePod, which some people probably haven't held either. On its own, without the use of accessories, which I'll show you in a moment, it has a maximum illuminance of 2,376 LUTs, but with one of the accessories in particular, that luminance is multiplied by over four and a half times, just to give a maximum luminance of 11,194 LUTs. Fortunately, it's not an RGB light, nor does it have any other lighting effects, but it does have a color temperature range of between a warm 2700K to a cool 6500K. So if you're in a film studio setting like this, where I'm always using a color temperature of around 5500K, then that mark is going to be comfortably achieved by the G60. It has a high CRI score of 96 and a TL CI score of 97. The CRI is a measure of how well a light source can show the true colors of objects to the human eye, and the TLCI is a measure of how well the light source can show those true colors of the objects to video cameras. Both scored out of 100, and the G60's scores mean that this light is going to be able to reproduce accurate and natural colors. This light has a simple and obviously miniature design, mostly made of plastic, which doesn't cheapen the feel of this light, but you'll probably find lower costing lights than this that actually feel more premium. On the back, there is a small LCD screen that shows the current settings, such as brightness, color temperature, power input, and mode. There are two knobs that let you adjust the brightness and the color temperature. If you loosen the adjustable stand, which also has a standard quarter inch screw hole that lets you mount the light to a tripod or a light stand, you'll see the DC power supply port. On the top of the light, there is the power button, and then on the side, you've got a USB-C power supply port, which supports the PD fast charging up to 100 watts. This means that you can power the light with a compatible high watt power bank or charger if you can find one, which is very convenient for outdoor and portable shooting. One of the good things about this light is that when you plug in the USB-C cable into the light, it will tell you the wattage that you're getting from the cable and the power adapter. This in turn affects the maximum light intensity that you do get from the light. As you can see here, this cable and power adapter produces 18 watts of PD power, and thus the maximum intensity will only go up to 24%. When I film in here, I often use it at around 20%, so using this cable would be fine. In comparison to when it's plugged in on the mains adapter or with a 100 watt PD adapter, the intensity is able to go all the way up to 100. And you probably have noticed that that scrolling took a bit of time to get all the way up to 100. But if you click the, in the dial, it jumps in increments of 50% to the nearest 50 and then back to 0%. Likewise, with the temperature dial, scroll to change from 2700 to 6500 or press the dial to alternate between 2700, the favorite 5500, all the way to the 6500. One of the coolest features of the G60 is its Dynafork calling system. See what I did there, coolest features. This consists of a gyroscope modeling heatsink and FOC fan that keep the light cool and quiet. There are calling vents on the lights that are positioned on the three sides. The fan speed adjusts automatically according to the temperature of the light, so you don't have to worry about overheating or noise. The only time I actually noticed the fans were on and running was when I was during the testing for this video when the light intensity was quite high for about five minutes or so and even then the fan was very quiet so you shouldn't have to worry about any of your microphones picking up any of that fan noises. Another great feature of the G60 and Zion in general is its accessory ecosystem. You can buy this G60 in two configurations, which I'll leave links to both in the description below. The standard pack comes with the power adapter, the power adapter organizer bag, a mini reflector, and the small diffusion dome. The other configuration is the combo pack, which I've purchased, which as well as those accessories from the standard pack, you also get a mini soft box with removable honeycomb grid, a Bowens mount adapter, making this light compatible with any large Bowens mount soft boxes, a mini tripod and a storage bag, which can fit most of your accessories. There are two modes on this light that essentially vary what happens when you actually plug power into the light. You've got the normal mode, which when you plug power in, you have to physically press the power button to turn it on, which most people would do. And then you've got the live mode where once power to the light is turned on, then the G60 will automatically turn on. 
useful for creators who will use these either high up where getting to the power button could be an issue or if you're using multiple lights simultaneously and turning each one on individually could get annoying. So having all of them connected to one power multi socket that only has to be turned on to power all of them is a good thing. The G60 has a ZY mount that lets you attach various modifiers that are specifically designed for it, such as the mini reflector, the mini softbox, or the Zion accessories. These modifiers are easy to install and remove, and they help you shape and soften the light according to your needs. The mini reflector, simply once in its correct position, needs twisting to secure and is now locked in place. To unlock this or any other ZY mounted accessory, hold the unlock trigger, twist, and release simple as that. As I mentioned before, thanks to this Bowens mount adapter, you can use any Bowens mount modifier with this light, such as a lantern softbox, a parabolic softbox, or even an umbrella, which the stalk of the umbrella fits straight through here and can be secured. This is gonna give you a lot of creative options and flexibility with this small light. It is recommended if you are gonna use this that a fitted softbox should be no larger than 60 centimeters in diameter and no heavier than 1.3 kilograms in weight. So for now in my small studio room, I find that the mini softbox is perfect for my setup. But if you've got a larger room than this, then you've got the option of either buying a larger softbox or using an existing one if you've got a Bowens mount compatible one already. The G60 also supports Bluetooth mesh control via the ZY Vega app, which if you've got a few of these, lets you control multiple lights at once from your smartphone, where you can adjust the brightness, color temperature, group settings, and more from the app, which is very handy for complex lighting setups using presets or when you don't have physical access to the dials on the light. So let's get this set up and I'll show you the power of this mini light in my working setup. So I've set it up completely in the dark here apart from my lights here and as you can see the light is currently on 0% so I'm going to turn it up to 50%. You can see how bright that is at 50%. And I'm going to go up to 100%. So that is really bright at 100%. So I'm going to go back down to 20%. And that's without the reflector, which it actually makes it brighter. So we'll put that on in a minute. So as you can see, we're on 20%. So I can go all the way from a cool 6500K all the way down to a warm 2700K as you can see there. And I'm going to stick it on what I normally use. So I normally have it on 5500K. So there. So that's what that is. Still feels a bit too bright, so I'm going to come down a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the mini reflector on and you can see just how bright it can get. So that's still on the same 18% and it probably looks even brighter. So if I was to go to 100% now, you're probably getting your 11,000 looks. So I'm gonna turn it down even more so you can see just how bright it can get. So this is, this is that 11% now. So I'm gonna turn it down even more too far. That is 1.5% brightness and look how bright it is. It's a bit more concentrated on myself. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a halo and a bit sweating because it's actually quite bright and warm in here now, but 1.5%. So let's put on this mini softbox just to see what it can do. We're gonna use it without the honeycomb grid on first. So let's get that set up. I've got that softbox on now. It's still at 1.5%, so you can see it's a little bit duller now, but we can raise the brightness up. So now it's on 19.4% and 5500 K in the color temperature. And this is what I'd usually have for the setup for my normal videos like this. But obviously the only difference is I'd have the honeycomb grid on. So let's put this on to see what the difference is as well. So I've now got the honeycomb grid on still at the 19.4% and 5500K. And it's a little bit more directional now with that honeycomb grid on. So it's probably a little bit more darker on it around the edges now, because it's a little bit more focused just on what's in front of the light. So this is how I'd normally have this set up, as you can see from here.
So far, I've been very impressed by the Zion Molus G60. It's powerful, semi-portable, versatile, easy to use, and it's meant that I've now fully transitioned from my old trusty Elgato key light. It's perfect for creators who need that reliable and functional lighting source for various scenarios, and ones who are restricted by space in their setup. But are there any drawbacks or limitations to this light? Well, there are a few things I wish were different or better. First of all, I wish there was an optional battery pack for this light. While it's great that it supports USB PD fast charging, it would be nice to have an option to use an external battery pack that attaches directly to the light without any cables or adapters. A bit more like its expensive brother in the Molus X100, which does, then it would be truly portable, making it more convenient for secure outdoor shooting or when you need to move around with the light. And secondly, I wish there was more features or modes for this light. It would be cool if it had RGB colors or lighting effects like other LED lights do. It's something that even an LED light like this has a standard. These would add more fun and creativity to your videos and shots. Of course, these are not essential features for most situations, but they would be nice to have as options. While the look of this G60 might not be to everyone's taste, and yes, you can pick up larger, more powerful lights than this at a lot more affordable price, this little light definitely pulls its weight in its crowded marketplace. I'm not sure you'll be able to find another light that packs all of the characteristics while weighing heavily on its unique selling point, its size. Everything, the power, the semi-portability, the convenience, or at the size of a Rubik's Cube. If you've got any questions about this light that I haven't mentioned in the video, just pop them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for more content just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.